Mr. Fishy, that was great. All right. Hey, what a tremendous way to catch them. Consistently, during the summertime, high spots. You can't go wrong. Now, before we go in any farther, let's talk about some of the things that I utilize to find those high spots and will use even more come fall fishing, which will translate into early spring fishing, too, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. That's using your depth finder, your GPS, your floating markers, and your map together. And we'll bring in drift sock, too, a little bit later on. But using your depth finder properly will make you 100% better fisherman each time you go out. Using your GPS to mark those locations once you found them, you can go back there year after year after year, and you will consistently catch bass in those areas. I have a couple spots in Lake Erie where I have caught over 5,000 smallmouth bass. Yeah, that's true, 5,000. Over the years of being in those same areas, consistent areas that hold fish, I can take customers there year after year. And if you find areas like that, nobody else will know about them. Mark them in your GPS, and you'll consistently catch them too. Let's start out with a little bit of video from Jim McConville. He's a Northeastern Lawrence rep. He's going to show you how to use your depth finder a little bit better. What we're trying to do this morning with the aid of GPS and sonar, I'll have a little buoy here. Um, don't necessarily need the buoy, but it's sort of nice to have. It's a great referencing tool. Um, we're on Lake Erie this morning, and we're fishing a hump that's about uh, 24 feet up and about 32 feet of water. And what I'm doing right now is I'm changing my screen. And I'm getting into split screen, and I'm coming right up over my hump. We're going to get close to it. And what I want to try to do... Okay, this is a real good spot for me to reference. Okay, what I have done is I've just thrown the buoy out on the south side of a hump on Lake Erie. And what we're going to try to do this morning, with the aid of a trolling motor and a GPS, I'm going to work the boat in configuration south and north because there's a light uh, south wind this morning. And what I wanted to do is I didn't want that marker buoy on top of the, the actual structure where the fish are at. I wanted it as a reference tool. I can see where I'm at with my waypoints on my GPS and my plot trail. But it's always nice if you have a buoy as a physical property to reference as you're fishing. Um, we'll be able to get back to that buoy time again, time again. But we're going to find fish all around this rock pile. And as the morning progresses and the fish are maybe on top, as the sunlight comes up, those fish may slide off onto the shade side or the deeper side of the hump. And that buoy I threw out really won't make a whole lot of difference. But my GPS plot trail will enable me to get back on to where I want to be and reference the time of day. I can slide back and forth. But I like to throw a buoy out. I do have a GPS. I do have sonar. We're fishing a rock pile no bigger than a basketball court here on Lake Erie this morning. And if you're familiar with the Great Lakes, there's an awful lot of water. And we're isolating in a spot no bigger than your front yard. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to drop shot a couple of worms and we're going to try some uh, tubes. And I'm going to work north and south on this hump and see if we can't catch a couple of fish this morning. But I wanted to drop a buoy as a reference point and we'll keep uh, sliding back and forth for that. All right, hey, using your depth finder in conjunction with your GPS and your marker buoy and your map will help you like nothing else. Being consistent, you'll catch fish in other areas of the country and lakes as well. Using them, learning how to use them, big key. Okay, now, one of the keys that I found over the last, I've been guiding for about 25 years, but over the last 10 years, it's come into play more and more is using a drift sock. Now, even though I have a bass boat with an electric trolling motor and I could hover in one spot, most of the fish, when I'm with customers, are caught over a larger area. So what we want to do is drift those areas like we did in live bait or fishing with tubes. Using that drift sock over the side of your boat will slow your drift down. If you've got a bigger boat, you might need two drift socks or one really big one. Sometimes even dragging sash weights or I've heard of people using bowling balls with a chain drilled through them. Dragging that bowling ball will slow you down, plus it'll stir up the bottom. You'll get a lot of bites, too. So using a drift sock to slow your boat down in order to keep that bait on the bottom is really key. Now let's go to fall fishing. It's the time of year when Leviathan is swimming. Boy, I'll tell you what. It's a time when your wrist will snap because you set the hook and one is so big, your wrist will literally break from the weight of the fish. The state record was caught in very early spring. It was an 8-pound, 4-ounce smallmouth bass taken near Barcelona on Lake Erie in New York. And you will have the opportunity to catch some, too. I've caught some big, big sixes 
that time of year, early spring, late fall, great time. You're going to want to look for those rises or drops in the deep water area, those 30, 40, 50 feet areas, and you're going to consistently catch big fish. You might think with that real cold water in that 40 degree range that they might not bite, but you know what? They're feeding up for winter, putting on a lot of weight, and they are gorging themselves. And when you go out there with a tube or a cicada, cicada is a metal bait, and look at the shape of it. It's a willow leaf blade with a little bit of lead poured onto it with a little prism tape on there. And when you lift that thing up and down, it vibrates. And one of the times when you go to lift it up, it's not going to lift up, and you're going to think you're snagging. It's not going to be. It's going to be one of those five, sixes, and maybe even a seven-pound smallmouth bass. Fall fishing, very, very early spring fishing, same thing, same patterns. Let's take a look. This is what we've been looking for all day. An absolute monster. A denizen of the deep. A true, true trophy bass. A true Lake Erie trophy bass, folks. Look at the size of that fish. Oh my God. Oh, oh folks, look at look at this fish. This is a this is a true Lake Erie trophy bass. It is a giant. Oh, it is a giant. Look at that fish, folks. <laughs> that is what we've been waiting for. Oh, God, look at that. That's what we've been waiting for. Oh, I'll tell you what. Just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the size of that fish. Yahoo, way to go. Goodbye, good mama. And there she goes. Yahoo. We are here on Lake Erie, and it's mid-October, and we're fishing for smallmouth bass. Fishing drops from 23 to about 28 feet. I'm fishing drop shots, uh, drop shot rig, little little Daiichi hook here, and uh, little Mojo sinkers. Working great, just using my own little hand-poured reaper. Not a reefer, but a reaper. Uh, some places they call them reefer, but around here that's illegal. So we use uh, we use a reaper. And uh, it's working great, just taking it, just shaking it a little bit and catching fish like that. Boy, success, unbelievable. That's what we've been waiting for. And fall is the time of year. Water temperature between 55 and 60 degrees. It's hovering the last few days, 57, 58 degrees. And you can just expect to catch monsters like that. All right, folks, to tie a drop shot hook, this is a Daiichi number one drop shot hook. We're going to take our line, we're going to tie a Palomar knot into our line. We take the line, we bend it a little bit. We took the we take the hook, and we keep the hook upside down, because when we finish our tie, it'll be right side up. Put the line through the eye, and make an overhand knot. You can go whichever way you want, but make an overhand knot. Very very simple. Overhand just means a simple old knot. And you take the line. Put the hook through the line and pull it tight. And when you pull it tight and give it a stretch right there, after we straighten it out, the hook will be pointing up. We started out with the hook down, now it's pointing up. And we're going to put one of our little drop shot sinkers on our mojo sinker. Instead of tying it, we simply put the line through, just give it a little pull and it stays right there. Now that that's designed that way, so if we get a snag, we just pull on it, and the line pulls through, and we don't lose all our, our line and our hook and everything else. All we do is lose our sinker. Look at that. Oh, he's not going to jump. You can't believe it. Fish that big, and he's not going to jump. Oh. Yes, he's going to jump. I know he will. <laughs> he has to jump. Oh. Well, I'm glad if he doesn't, because that will help us get it in. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Nice way to end the show. All right. Drop shot fishing on Lake Erie, folks, just can't beat it. Using the right baits and uh, keeping it on the bottom, looking at those drop-offs, keeping the bait, changing colors, just putting that right combination together. You can't miss. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and they're getting aggressive. Remember, play that current, the wind, all those things. You'll be successful, too. All right, let them go. All right. What I'm doing.